against. Thank you. Carried. So, and now we'll hear from our community boards. First up is Papua New Inner Central, and I'd like to welcome Emma and Simon to the table, please. Good to see you again. Kia ora koutou. thank you for having us along this morning to um, present on behalf of our Waipapa Papanoi Inner Central Community Board. Um, Simon and I are going to give you a quick rundown on what's been going on in our neck of the woods over the past month. So first up, um, first up. <laughs> move the next slide please. Might need some technical assistance with that, my clicker's not clicking. Are you going to let them drive? Um, so first up. Uh, here's a list of decisions we've made under delegation at our April meeting. Uh, we approved a number of discretionary response fund applications, um, including supporting the Papanoi RSA with their annual Anzac Day Parade and Service. Um, this is the second biggest Anzac service in the city, and we're proud to be able to support the RSA in this event. Uh, we also approved some no-stopping restrictions on Dorset Street um, and at the Dawson Street-Kilmore Street intersection. I'm away. Uh, we've heard from some members of the public in April. Uh, Dave Gardner, who's a local resident, came to speak to us and uh, give some thanks to the community board and to council staff for some improvements that have been made to safety on the shared path, uh, pedestrian cycleway path on Cranford Street. And this is in the area around the uh, Waitomo uh, fuel station there, adjacent to the placemakers building. And there's been uh, an issue the community's been talking to us about for a little while around visibility, uh, particularly relating to plantings and fencing between those two properties. Some changes have been made to that now and it's made a dramatic difference, so it's always nice to have someone come along and uh, thank us and thank Council for a job well done. Uh, Dave also raised some uh, questions with us around uh, aspects of the uh, Cranford Basin and, and some of the future use and public access to some of the land there that's uh, in the long-term stormwater part of the basin. Uh, we heard from a local resident who raised with us some issues around uh, pavement conditions, particularly how they impact on people with mobility issues uh, and issues uh, uh, around vegetation and also damage to pavement uh, and how that affects people on mobility scooters in particular. Uh, and a uh, shout out to Victoria for supporting this resident with getting Snaps and Solve set up so that she can make some specific reports on the areas that are impacting her and that she has brought to our attention. Uh, and finally, we heard from Karate Christchurch, uh, who gave us a bit of an overview of the organisation and also their dojo on Phillips Street in Phillipstown, uh, and just gave the board a bit of an insight into the activities that are happening there and the great uh, connection they've got with the community. Um, the weekend before last, Astor Lab um, held the Eid Al Fatir Festival in Hagley Park, and it was a huge success. Um, I know a number of you attended, as did Simon and myself, and it was a fantastic atmosphere with, with such a large and diverse crowd. Um, there were some great entertainment, stalls selling um, ethnic and traditional Muslim wares, opportunities to learn more about what Eid is all about, and of course some amazing food. And I'd like to take this opportunity to say a huge thank you to Astor Lab for their efforts in running such a successful event. They worked in partnership with our local board staff and the Waihoro Sprayed and Kashmir Heathcote board staff, building capacity in the organisation to offer even more to our communities and to bring people together. A uh, recap on our public engagement around a community board plan. Uh, we've spoken about this a little bit in previous uh, meetings. Uh, so we've had a number, as uh, board members and staff have attended a number of community events in our area, including the ones you see uh, listed here and the images you see here. Uh, and of course this has been promoted through uh, usual channels such as Have Your Say and our social channels as well. Um, so that engagement was uh, followed by us workshopping our final draft of the plan and we'll be adopting it at our board meeting next week. Um, the nine priorities for the term are listed there. So we've got a connected transport network in Papanoi Inner Central, the implementation of safety initiatives across the, the area, the revitalisation of Petrie Park, um, Phillipstown Community Hub, flooding in the Papanoi in a central board area, intensification in the area, downstream effects management plan, um, Shirley Community Reserve and a Papanoi youth facility. Um, and we look forward to working with you to realise these aspirations over the next two and a half years. That's us. Thank you. Oh, one more. Oh, sorry. Uh, just finally, uh, some other recent developments in the board area at Shirley Community Reserve, which is one of our uh, sort of priority areas and projects for the term. Uh, new fence has gone up. Uh, there's new signage there and as requested by the community, a gate as well. This is uh, looking at the entrance just adjacent to the pedestrian crossing 
on Shirley Road, so there's some uh, improvement to safety there as well as uh, amenity and the look of the reserve. Uh, and uh, we had a recent meeting with the school principals in our board area. Uh, it was a really good opportunity to connect with the larger board area that we have now, and particularly interesting to get an update from Marion College, who are uh, moving into the Papua Nui area later this year, and a bit of insight into uh, the really innovative approach they've taken to repurposing the former warehouse building that will now hold their school. And that is us. That is us. Thank, <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much for getting keep getting us up to speed and uh, letting us know what's going on in your ward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, doke. So moving right along, we have um, Helen and Marie from Horswell Hornby Rickerton. Welcome. Thank you for having us, and I understand we have five minutes. Is that correct? Five we have five minutes to answer any questions. Far away. Far away. Far away. Clock's going right. Yes. Yeah. Marie goes um, first. All right. Yep. So we've ha we have a um, four um, bullet points there of the decisions that the board has um, made in the last meeting, and I just wanted to touch about the. Um, the Hosel Junction Road, Hamill Road, and Alveston Drive um, intersection. So um, the board has um, made a decision to do some safety improvements on that. Um, unfortunately, a week after the board decision, another vehicle went through the fence. And I understand that it was six times in the last five years that it has happened. And um, um, Councillor Moore can confirm it is the same property owner in mm. the same address. So their fence has been smashed through like six times in the last five years. And the last one was just um, a couple of weeks ago. So it, it's we're, the board is really keen to see some um, safety improvements in this um, roundabout. Tomorrow. <laughs> right. Do you want yeah. to flip that through? That's your we, we sort of had a range of discretionary funds, but I think I'll move on from that. Um, all right. Um, Marie, Anzac Day services. So yes, um, we've had a few um, Anzac Day services, and so the community board members were spread across the board area attending all of these events. And um, we also have the Hornby COVID support line. It was initially set up to support households isolating with COVID during the COVID um, um, times and then now it's extending this service to be a general support line which is very good for the Hornby area. Um, uh, right. There's a connect program at Hornby which has worked very well. Hornby's done, doing a lot of really use, useful social social programs so that really started off from virtually nothing five, five years ago to becoming a really major force. And the Oak Development Trust is providing migrant women in the Rickerton area with opportunities to gather in a warm, comfortable setting on arts, arts and crafts. Um, just looking at the time, there's two extra things I'd just would like to touch on. Um, I understand a week or two weeks ago, there was a car raid through the Hornby Hub at 4.50 a.m. The Security people were on on to it quickly, but they can't arrest anybody. So um, it's it's just alerting you to this issue. There are other um, ram raids in effect Hornby, um, and over the last couple of weeks, a number of us have been tied up with residents who are concerned about a new development in Horswell. Um, there may be a petition if it hasn't come in already. Um, and just to advise you, they'll be coming to the board or to council. I, I understand they can't come to both. So um, they're really feeling that Kayanga Aura didn't consult them 
and they're really feeling they haven't had a voice. So they will be having a voice in some way, I guess. So so that's us, basically. Thank you. Anyone got any questions, please? You've, you've done a fantastic Thank job. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank Good you. Good on you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Coast of Burwood, Linwood. Paul and Jackie, please. Tanakato Kato, uh, Mayor and Councillors. Um, I'd just like to begin uh, by acknowledging my board colleagues and our support staff, uh, Chris and Cindy and team, uh, and to thank uh, them all for the excellent work they put into making our annual plan and community board priorities. Um, yeah, really good uh, to work together with everyone, members and staff included. Um, so just start with a few little highlights from our board area. Um, we had the New Brighton uh, Duke Festival of Surfing um, and uh, from Friday the 24th uh, to Sunday the 26th of March and include a variety of surf related events including Good Vibes, um, Markezy um, Beachside Blowout Skate Comp and New Brighton Amphitheatre and Salty Sessions Music Event. Uh, at the uh, Bridge South Brighton. Uh, and we also had the uh, Fresh Pool Party uh, at Depot Toy Toy, uh, Linwood Pool, on Saturday 25th of um, February, after securing uh, two Manawa funding from Sport Canterbury, uh, using cultural development, have established their Fresh Pool Parties, which they regularly deliver at Depot Toy Toy, um, providing this trusted brand where participants can enjoy youth-specific uh, events uh, and um, in a free swim season session and uh, haircuts and pizzas and a DJ. Uh, yeah, both those events are pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Um, next, I just wanted to um, draw uh, your attention to, we had a really good meeting in Wollston uh, recently. Um, um, uh, we had a really good meeting in Wollston um, around uh, crime and antisocial behaviour um, the board staff and uh, MP Dr Tracy McClellan uh, organised a meeting of key stakeholders on Friday the 24th of March at uh, Dr McClellan's office. Among the stakeholders were representatives from Kainga Order, Art of Potama Corrections, MSD Housing, Community Patrol, and I actually went out with Community Patrol just recently, uh, and the police, along with the three Linwood reps, uh, me and Jackie and Yanni. Um, and our community uh, development advisor, uh, and Dr McClellan. Uh, it's really great to be able to work with our local MP. Uh, she's um, yeah, uh, really uh, partnering with us uh, and, and to address the issues that uh, people in Wollstone really care about. Uh, we had a really productive meeting talking about some of the very real challenges uh, that we face as a community without losing sight of the fact that Wollstone is a great place to live uh, and to do business. Uh, the agencies have been working really hard in, in the background already, both individually and cooperatively, uh, uh, including the police who in March did 10 walk-arounds Wilson Village and 20 drive-arounds. Uh, we also received very strong support uh, from the agencies for the alcohol ban, which is currently temporary, but will be coming to, um, before you, I think, on the 17th. Um, and um, we did discuss some ideas on how to build on Wilson Streets, uh, so watch this space. Um, we have a, a couple of uh, um, advocacy uh, issues we'd like to draw to your attention before we talk about our Part A items. Um, we have agreed in principle to the sale of a strip of land in the Wolston Park to the Te Waka Unua School. Te Waka Unua is actually at capacity and struggling for space and they have in fact been um, leasing this land for approximately five years already so the sale um, does make sense. Um, we'd also like to raise that there are other green spaces in um, Wilson, that, such as Cutler Park, that could do with some investment if available from the sale of that. Just a, an ask. Um, and also, while we're aware that the port link issue is complicated and subject to a current um, resource consent application, this the situation in Wilson is gearing up to be as frustrating and as traumatising to the people, the residents, as the organics processing issue. They are subjected to constant noise and vibration from the process, but we understand 
um, that it's complicated and, and subject to a lot of legal constraint and so on. But this um, does reinforce the need for the district plan changes to be fit for purpose and actually have a really good look at the interface between the residential and, and, and an industrial fringe because th this isn't the only situation in the city where people are being impacted in their daily lives and being literally traumatised by industrial action that, that's right on their doorstep that wasn't there when they bought their properties. So just um, in closing, I'd like to ask you to keep that on your radar when we're looking at the, the district plan changes and if things do come up about the port link. We do have, uh, we do, we do have legal responsibilities but we also have a moral responsibility to do the right thing by the people that we represent. Thank you very much. Uh, Spot on time. Uh, are we able to address the Part A items now? We do that after so when, when they come up. Together. Yeah, yeah. After the board's been if that's all right, so we'll, we'll do them all together. All right, cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Right. So don't run away. Pardon? Don't run away. Okay, I'll try not to. <laughs> Right, thank you. Thank you, Doug. Uh, Reuben, and is Penel Penelope, please. For Banks Peninsula. Morena. The Banks Peninsula. We'll start with a beautiful photo. Lovely. We've got so many of those. And then we'll jump to the next page, which is um, some of the decisions we've made under delegation. Uh, the first was some funding to, for Diamond Harbour and Districts for their building consent. Uh, application fees, so that's a really important um, community resilience project there for the medical centre, and also to the Little River Craft Station, um, which helps pay some of the wages there. Um, that's a, a really busy facility, um, especially over summer and, and through those long weekends when everybody flocks across to Akaroa and stops in Little River on the way. Uh, and we also approved a landscape development plan for a very imaginatively titled Reserve 1259, which is shown in the photo there, which is a, um, a freshwater uh, reserve. And so we've also spoken around um, working with Papatupirunanga for a new name that is a little more imaginative than 1259 for that reserve. Um, the landscape plan really makes sure that that space is um, planted out and preserved into the future, so it's a really, a really positive project and um, one of many such projects that's potential to happen across Banks Peninsula. Um, the board also being in Akaroa uh, had a tour of the Akaroa Service Centre, which you can see there on your left. So that's a fully restored historic building. It's a little underutilised currently, but a real community asset. So the board tour was great to see the potential facilities there and, and, and how that could be realised for the local community and community groups. And also we heard from a number of local residents in Akaroa around the rec grounds, which we included in our oral submission also to the annual plan last week. Um, lots of young families, uh, lots of kids who want to be able to get out there and enjoy those facilities, but they're just really not adequate currently for that to happen. And being slightly remote and isolated, those communities are less able to travel down the road to a different facility because that road's quite a long one. Uh, also, we've just included an update for you there, Phil, on the um, Governor's Bay Jetty. So we will continue. We'll continue to include those until you need to present the dollar back. Uh, but that's another great example of one of our strong communities really stepping up to protect a local asset uh, and, and a piece of, of local history. And then we thought it would be appropriate to just give Council an update on Anzac Day services that happened across the peninsula. So we had really strong attendance. Um, that's Akaroa, you can see there, had close to 500 attending there, along with Board Member Nigel Harrison for Akaroa Subdivision. Uh, Little River had uh, over 100, and Lynn Leslie, our Wairewa Board Member, spoke at that service. And the Littleton event was attended by Councillor Fields and had close to 400 in attendance as well. So really strong attendance at all of those Anzac Day services and a great board presence to lay a wreath and, and ensure that Council's respect for such a significant day was noted. You've got an extra page. 
pretty much um, to the go. Okay. And now, oh, no, no, I, I do have this page. Sorry, I just didn't write any notes on it. So this is our destination management plan, um, which is currently out for consultation. That consultation period runs through to the 19th of May. Um, and that plan will then come to the board for endorsement on the 12th of June. So this is, I know, something that we've raised in probably every report we've given to council. Uh, it's a, a really significant piece of work. Um, we're, we're hoping that we get as much response and engagement from our local communities who called for this plan in the first place um, so that they have a really robust and solid roadmap into the future. The focus of the plan is not a tourism or a marketing document. The ask both from the community and from board members in the last term and this is that it is a plan for community, for environment and for visitors to Banks Peninsula. So I think with that focus across it, it's important that we hear from as many local residents and as much of Banks Peninsula as possible. And that is the last page. Okay, thank you. I'd just like to say um, it, it's good to see you putting down your uh, some of your discretionary response fund spending and, and see that it's been putting to, put to good use. And thank you for also keeping me up to date with the um, the Governor's Bay Jetty because... Uh, I have actually um, bought at the auction a dinner on the end of it when it's finished in a, wee, in a wee tent. Excellent. So well, the board will look forward to their I'll invitations. I'll probably be there by myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, thank you for keeping us up to date. That's no one problem. of them. Thank, thank you. you. Come and see me when you need to find that dollar fill. Okay. Yeah. I'm right behind you, mate. No worries. <laughs> okay. Um, Spray and cash me Heathcote. Callum and Kia, please. Morning, Nikia Koto. Um, thanks for welcoming us back to present to you again uh, today. So um, we're just going to run through a few of the things that have been happening in our community, as well as the issues that we're concerned about. Um, so we'll start off. If we go, yeah, there you go, Kia. You can kick us off. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so the board uh, uh, attended Anzac Day events um, and hosted two Anzac Day events. Um, Tin Limley uh, attended events in uh, Sumner and Hefkert. Um, and we hosted an event at the Waltham Gates and the Sydenham Cemetery. Um, this was, uh, and uh, Lee Sampson attended an event up at uh, Victoria Park. Um, yeah, uh, really small and intimate events, which were lovely, and um, a wee boy uh, who was a, laid the reef at Sydenham Cemetery uh, emailed Calum and I afterwards, say that, uh, you know, a new New Zealander, and it made him feel really part of the community to have that opportunity, so that was lovely. Hmm. Um, the, board's also oh, <coughs> the board has also hosted the Edible and Sustainable Garden Awards. Um, so this is hosted in partnership with the Canterbury Horticultural Society, who judges all the, all the gardens around the, the neighbourhood. Um, it's not just an event for people with backyards. It's an event for, uh, for, for schools and churches, uh, kindergartens, community groups, and we've got a category as well for people with balcony gardens. So it's, it's a really wide range of people that come along who are passionate about gardening and planting. And at the end of the event, there was lots of conversation and kai and uh, whaka for Uh So there will be a Part A report coming to this meeting about uh, marking cycle lanes on Walton Road between Morehouse Ave and Brougham Street. This is, uh, obviously, Walton Road is an a important commuter route for people travelling from Walton, Apawa, St Martins and Huntsbury into town on uh, through there. Um, this is about filling some of those missing missing gaps, essentially. Um, it's a really positive project that's uh, had some positive f uh, feedback through consultation. Um, and probably the only thing that we would say is when the Brougham Street upgrade goes through, it'll be great to think about how we can continue carrying through some of those links. Cool. Unfortunately, I don't have a slide for the next one I was going to talk about, but um, the board's also made a decision around safety improvements to the Colombo Street, round, uh, the roundabout on Colombo Street at the corner of... Um, Columbo and Centaurus, so it's quite high uh, high volume uh, roundabout, and it's been uh, one of the most dangerous round, um, intersections in the city for quite a while. Uh, so we've had we had a huge amount of community feedback on that on those changes there um, from right across uh, our ward area, ward area, and we've decided to go ahead with improving the safety for for uh, cyclists and pedestrians uh, as well. 
And uh, finally, uh, we've got our community board plan um, coming up for adoption on the 11th of May. Um, one of the key things there is, as you're all aware, is the South Library. Um, and just wanted to speak, uh, you know, again to reiterate that this is a really, really valuable and well-loved facility. Um, and we're, we're really excited that now's the time for the rebuild to happen, to have it done, done right. Um, we know that investing in a good quality facility now means savings in the long run, and it means a good outcome for the community in general. Um, and we also want to lend our support to the current notice of motion from Councillor Scandrit, um, especially the so part 2A of that motion, which is essentially confirming that the scope of the project is a, is a, is a, is a light for light replacement with what's, what's currently there. So uh, that's, um, that's the South Library. We've got a couple of other key, key items on our, for our board plan. We've got the uh, Orpawaho Heathcote River Guidance Plan that's been developed by the community. Uh, and in particular, I want to recognise the, uh, the OHRN, the Otaku Heathcote uh, River Network, um, who have helped develop that plan in partnership with Council. Um, and we're really keen to see resource um, sort of put to putting that plan into impl implementation. Um, yeah. I don't know if you had anything else you wanted to add, Kia? Uh, just to touch, uh, just to acknowledge the work of Helene Mountner. Um, obviously, we saw the mother of all cleanups, mm. and Helene's been a big part of that going back to the early days. And I'm um, just a former uh, Spread and Kashmir Community Board member, and just to acknowledge all the work she's put in. Yeah. Cool. So that's all that we've got for you today, Phil. Happy for questions. Thank you, Thank you mate. Any questions from anyone? Okie dokie. Thank you very much for coming along. So much. thank you all aboard. Oh, sorry. The Chair and Deputy Chair of Fendleton Waramari Harewood are unable to be here today, so I'm really looking forward to hearing from them next time. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you to all the boards for their presentations. And I'll now ask for a mover and seconder. Thank you, Melanie. <laughs> and seconded by Sarah. Thank you. I'll put that motion. All those in favour? All those against? Thank you. Carried. That's brilliant.